What is up YouTube? This is Vault here, back in today with you guys another new Speed Duel deck profile video. And today, if you guys have seen this Speed Duel match uh, a few days ago uh, of the normal beatdown versus the Blue Eyes deck, uh, here is the deck profile for you guys once again. And I really, really highly recommend for those who are starting to get into Speed Duels that this deck is a great, great, great deck to start learning and picking up and start playing because it's extremely easy to learn, easy to play, easy to understand, no complexity, not too much thinking, straightforward overall. So yeah, before we go into the deck profile, as usual, we're going to do a quick card sleeve review. We're going to be using our uh, Do Academy Raw Yellow uh, House uh, Sleeves, um, I guess because I just felt yellow matches our normal monsters uh, very, very well right here. Uh, so that's why I decided to use the sleeves. But once again, quick shout out. If you guys really like the sleeves that I feature on the channel and you guys want to have some for you, get some for your own, be sure to check out the Evolve eBay store. There's a link in the description down below. Click it. There's some exclusive OCG with some spectacular artwork of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! monsters on the back. So be sure to check out those sleeves. And just so you guys know and click them for purchase, we ship uh, worldwide internationally. And I re really, really appreciate the support overall. But anyways, with our skill uh, right here, we're playing Yami Marek and we're playing Twisted Personality, of course, nonetheless. Not, not surprised at all. It's simply because I just couldn't think of what a good skill is. I thought of Digging for Gold, Destiny Draw. Those are pretty standard skills that you can play that works very well with any decks. But since the meta right now is just filled with so many burn decks, so many other players are actually playing Twisted Personality. I just think it just makes total sense that you play one for yourself as well. This, don't get me wrong, this this is this skill is actually even a really good uh, side deck card, as a matter of fact, because for certain matchups when they are burning you down, uh, you can actually, you know, uh, get counters for yourself and make it pay off uh, so you're not losing too much at the same time. Now, this is still, even though you're not playing a burn deck, this skill is still really good generically because, you you know, dealing damage is basically the core of the game overall. And uh, getting those free stacks to basically pop a monster or rip a card off your opponent's, discard a card off of your opponent's hand, really, really good. Anyways, moving to our monsters, first of all, our boss monster of the deck right here, Gilgar. Now, this card came out in Twisted Nightmares. Uh, basically, I think it belongs to Yami Marix. Uh, anyways, and it's basically essentially the highest attacking monster, normal monster, that you can normal summon without a tribute in the current meta right now. 1800, which is really, really good. Next, we are playing Warrior Digrapher, the second highest normal uh, monster with best stats. 1700 attack and 1600 defense right here. Now, next for the third place, we're playing Triple Cabal Zals right here. Once again, 1700 attack and 1500 defense, one of the best stats. We're playing a jumbo of the triple three strongest normal monsters in the game currently. And that basically rounds the foreign monsters. Nothing much, nothing less. None of these have effects, they don't do anything, they're just simple monsters that you summon and start beating down your opponent. That's why it's easy, easy to learn, nothing too complicated at all. Now, moving on to our spells, very spell heavy deck. We do play Triple Heat Wave, really good against any other deck out there. No one is expecting Heat Wave to come out at this current time. It's very, very special, very surprising. Uh, works pretty well with, um, I would say, like, Gaia the Fierce Knight. Uh, but, you know, we've seen that kind of fall off already. Earlier before, when, when Match of the Millennium Star deck came out, uh, it was a really, really a high profile, high potential deck, and many people got their eyes on it. Seems really, really cool. Uh, but now Heat Wave, once again, really, really annoying because everyone else is very, very likely to be playing effect monsters and you must, must force them to set them or they can't uh, special summon uh, or they can't basically summon any strong effect monsters right off the bat. Next, we do play two double backing shields. We didn't get to see this in action, but simply the, because, you know, it's just a very good um, card to basically boost up your normal summonable monsters. They're all normal summonable, so they all, all meet the requirements of Bat and Shield. You don't special summon in this deck whatsoever. Boosting up Gilgarth all the way up to 2800 now makes it annoying for your opponent to deal with. But since we were playing against a Blue Eyes deck in our matchup for the Speed Duel uh, match duel, um, it wasn't as useful, so we ended up siding it out. Anyways, more normal monster support, we're playing. One Dark Factory of Mass Production, uh, you guys got to see it, but we didn't get to play it because there's no need to recur uh, those resources. Uh, but, you know, since our normal monsters, when they do get to the grave, you know, you can play this and simply get two of them back from your graveyard, which is really good. 
We play one order to charge. Some of you guys might want to play Offering Suited Doom, but I felt like order to charge was more suitable for this deck. And also, I didn't feel like skipping my draw phase because I felt like it's always a very crucial thing. Top decking uh, or drawing a card is just very, very key. And although Offering Suited Doom is a really, really powerful card, still it can be game changing. But I felt like order to charge makes more sense, anyways, because we play so many normal monsters. And I don't feel like skipping that draw, like I said. We actually play one creature seizure, which is also another tech guy, which is really, really interesting. Uh, basically, each player gives their opponents control one of their monsters. Control is choice. You must choose one face-up monster. Now, you guys might be thinking, like, how is this deck going to beat, like, a competitive meta deck or something that's really, really powerful? Well, creature seizure is going to help you out right there. You can give your normal monster, and then you can force your opponent to give you one of their effect monsters or one of their boss monsters, uh, which is really, really neat as well. So that rounds up with the spells. So yeah, we do play a lot of spells in this deck overall, but they're all very useful and very helpful. Uh, the key thing, once again, you want to be playing Heat Wave as much as you can, as often as you can, because this gate deck is very, very, very uh, heavy in the early game, and you basically want to stop your opponent from playing in the beginning, so then you can swing in for damages, and then win from there on, basically. Next, we're uh, moving into our traps, we're playing Double Dust Tornado, definitely a meta card that we need to basically stop all those Zomas and Nightmare Wheels, and then one Windstorm, you guys can easily stop this out for another Dust Tornado, but I felt like Windstorm is just generically still a pretty decent card to basically help you buy you some time, and it, you know, can be very powerful and change the type. So that's a 20 card deck, main deck, that's it, no more, no less, so moving into our side deck, right here with more normal monster support that we actually sighted in but we didn't get to see is Faustian Bargain. Similar to Creature Seizure, in a way, uh, it's really good for a normal monster decks. Uh, target one special summon monster on the field, send it to the graveyard, and if you do, you can special summon one level 4 or lower monster from your hand. Now, one level 4 or lower normal monsters from your hand. Now, all of our uh, monsters are level 4 or lower anyways, so Faustian Bargain works great. You can send a lot of annoying cards your opponent does. A lot of the decks do special summon nowadays anyways. I believe it's a really good card against Zoma, Moths, basically, yeah, a lot of uh, opponents do special summon. But for the reason that I put it in the side deck is because not all decks you encounter do special summon. So in, in that case, I put it in the side deck. Just so you guys know when you're moving into game two, it's a really good card to side in if your opponent does special summon a lot. Next, we play one Golden Ladybug. As I mentioned uh, before, you know, Nightmare Wheel is uh, very, very popular. You want to even out the life points that you're losing with Golden Ladybug. And also helps stack your Twisted Personality uh, when you're losing life points from the opponent's Nightmare Wheel. But you got to regain it with Ladybug, which is great. One DD Crow uh, for any graveyard uh, centric decks are really, really important that they play uh, really key cards that they need to dig into the grave. So I always highly recommend at least one of them side deck when you get, uh, just in case you're against any graveyard centric decks. Anyways, one Dust Tornado right here uh, for more extra backward removal if you are facing a lot of annoying Zomas and a lot of annoying Nightmare Wheels overall. And then last but not least, since this is an early game deck, I always highly recommend Jar of Avarice as a side deck option, especially since this is a 20 card deck. Overall, if, you're, if the game does turn out to be grindy, Jar of Avarice is always really helpful uh, overall. So that rounds up with the side deck right here for you guys. A little bit interesting, a little bit different uh, than the regular because simply because we do play Faustian Bargain, uh, which is a very, very uh, cool card, and I think it's very, very gimmicky and interesting overall. And then last but not least, once again, as always, I always talk about this, you know, play, just play six fusion monsters and put it in your extra deck, just so your opponent might feel like you might be uh, digging into your extra deck by any time, any chance, by the off chance anyways. Uh, so yeah, never go in without an extra deck. Uh, you know, these fusion monsters are extremely easy to get, uh, they, they, you know, they're barely worth a penny each, so definitely highly recommend you grab all of it. But anyways, uh, that basically rounds up the entire deck profile right here. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button, give it the thumbs up. Definitely comment down below what you guys think about this deck profile. Really, really interesting. You don't really see this type of stuff nor uh, normally, especially because it's a normal deck as well. It's interesting and funny. Uh, definitely gonna surprise a lot of opponents. Uh, but I really felt like this deck is really, really great. Uh, other than just like buying starter decks, but you know, uh, really great for uh, players to basically learn the basic concepts of even just Yu-Gi-Oh in general uh, and get into it 
and uh, play pretty decent as well. You know, I tested out this deck against many other people, and it works out pretty good, pretty well. Many of them didn't expect it, and you took them, take them by surprise, and you actually do win games from there as well. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed it, be sure to click that like button once again. Subscribe to the Vault channel. I highly, highly appreciate it if you guys can recommend the channel to someone who loves speed loose just as much as as you do. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have a great day, great night, wherever you are. Stay tuned for the next video, and we'll see you soon. This is about signing.